This is the Legacy Wealth Code Podcast, helping you build long-term wealth and a lasting legacy through real estate investing, tax strategies, and motivational stories from some of the most successful and influential people out there. Here are your hosts, real estate investor and entrepreneur, Michael Notbaum and real estate investor and attorney, Andrew Hook. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Legacy Wealth Code Podcast. I'm super excited today. Well, Kind of excited with the guy that I have here, a good, good friend of mine. You'll notice Andrew is not on the call today. So I'm excited that I've got all the questions for this man today. Rob Adams became a good friend of mine, I would say, over the last four or five years. Is that That's right, right, Rob? We've known each other a minute now. Yeah. So we met actually in a real estate mastermind. Rob's got a great real estate business on the retail side, has done some investing as well, Airbnbs, and we'll get into some of that. But to me, the game changer for Rob Adams is the legacy that he's created around an organization called Thanksgiving's Heroes. So um, I don't even want to give a huge introduction because I love your story so much and I want you to share it. So without further ado, Rob, welcome to the show. Well, thank you, Mr. Notbaum. I am grateful to be here. Can you hear me okay? I want to make sure that I'm, I'm coming across okay. Yeah. Uh, um, yep. This is actually our first remote guest, so we'll see. Hopefully, it comes out as good as the other episodes. Well, perfect. Well, you know, as Michael was saying, I have, I'm have i in real estate. I've been in real estate for almost 14 years now. It's crazy how fast time goes. But as I have been through the ups and downs of the market and, and learned a few different things, the most important thing that I've learned is that it's about creating a legacy in your life. It's about creating something that you really are passionate about because we can all get up and make money. We can all get out and grind and do the thing. But this one thing that I started, it's called Thanksgiving Heroes. We started it nine years ago now. This is our ninth year. All started when I was a, a boy, actually, in South Texas. I, my family moved down there from Las Vegas. We went down there. The market kind of fell apart when we were moving. And so my dad got down there. He was an HVAC technician, and he lost his job. We'd spent all of our money to get to this new opportunity, and it just fell apart. Next thing you know, we're living in this truck, a pickup truck on the land that we had bought with all of our savings. And it was my mom and dad slept in the cab of the pickup truck. And I slept in the back of the truck with my sister, Lori, and my little brother, Jake. So that was our sleeping arrangement. So we didn't eat unless we were at school. Once in a while, we would get like a little uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwich or something like that. But I was on assisted lunch and breakfast. And so the bus would come get us. We'd go to school. I would be so hungry. I remember just jumping off the bus, like being that kid that's the first one up to the front of the line and running in to get breakfast. And the, the lunch ladies knew little Robbie. They knew me coming in all excited and they would load that tray up. And I don't know what I would have done without those good old lunch ladies. But the reason I started the charity was because in this period of time, it was about Christmas time and a family came and they took us in. And as they took us in, they lived in Utah. And so they would travel back from South Texas to Utah and spend time with their family. And so the house would remain pretty much empty for a week. And they just brought us into their house and said, you can stay here. And it was the first time that it really occurred to me as, you know, as you're at that age, you don't really think about the haves and have nots. But I thought, wow, we can go to the bathroom indoors. Like we can, we can use the shower whenever we want. But the thing that impressed me the most was that they said, all of this is yours. And I opened up the fridge and in the fridge was, it was full of food. And there was a pumpkin pie about eye level for that little junior high boy with a little piece of whipped cream in the middle. And I was so excited about this pumpkin pie. I, and it, there was a turkey, there was all of the fixings for this meal. And I was just, it really impacted me. I really was, I had never been that excited about food ever. I didn't realize that I was hungry. You don't know when you're that, you just don't know. And I remember turning around to my mom and my mom, her name is Maida. She moved here from, she's an immigrant from Germany. She moved here and she was just crying. And I said, mom, one day when I'm rich, I'm going to do this for somebody else. And she said, Robbie, I know you will. Now, fast forward, I'm in real estate, I'm investing, I'm doing, I'm, I'm listening to Michael, I'm listening to all these coaches, and I'm doing really well. My team is growing. My life is blessed. And I mean, my children are blessed. I'm blessed. I haven't ever had this much abundance in my life. I didn't want for anything. I thought to myself, now is my chance. This is it. This is what, because back then, my definition of riches, we're not going to, we're not sleeping in our truck. You know what I mean? There's your definition. Well, yeah, and you know where your next meal is yeah. coming from. Like that was just something yeah. I never had. And so my definition of success had changed significantly. And now here I was 
by any definition successful, I should, it's time to pay it forward. And so I went to the school district and I found out here where I live, which is a really nice place. If you've ever been to Utah, even the bad parts of town are pretty good parts of town, you know, here one in seven kids back then didn't eat unless they were at school, just like me. They were just, they're just like me. And adults who don't eat, adults who are struggling with, with food, I have I have to think, you know, you made your choices. I, I mean, there's, there's, there's different times where that's absolutely not true, but children don't get that opportunity. Like, it's not their fault that they're going hungry. And that really, I was amazed that in this place where everybody seems to be well taken care of and well fed, there was this high level of need. And so I decided I was going to feed 10 families. I just thought, man, I could do that. I could go to the store going to figure about this much money per family. I'm going to go buy the food, put it together, and then go deliver it myself. And I told my best friend, Joe, he's like, well, I want to feed 10 families. And just can, Joe told someone, I told someone in that first year, we fed 755 families. And when I say fed, we're delivering like 65 pounds of food to their house the weekend before Thanksgiving. So the kids get out of school on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, they're out of school, and then they're out of school for that whole week. I want them to have food the whole time. So Saturday, they got a big box of food, and they were able to feed a family of five, which is average here in Utah, for the whole week. And that was my goal. And we've been doing it now for nine years. And truthfully, I didn't. I, I felt like I paid my karmic debt the second year I wasn't going to do it. I thought I, that was a lot of work. It was a lot of emotion. And so I'm done with this. And I got a phone call about six weeks before Thanksgiving. And there was a lady that said, hey, Rob, where are we doing the, the meals this year? And I said, well, we're not doing it. I, that was only kind of a one-time thing. And she said, well, just so you know, last year, my husband had left me and my two daughters, and we were destitute. And without that delivery of food that your charity, which wasn't even a charity, it was just me and some of my friends, your charity delivered to us, we would have not had food that whole time. And so now I'm on my feet, and I want to pay it forward. And I had this moment of like kind of the universe kind of hit me in the face, like this is what it's about. It's not about food. It's about creating a meaningful, safe service opportunity so that my children and your children can serve and realize how good their life is. My kids want for nothing. They, they, I buy them garbage every Christmas, and I ask them in January, hey, Michael, do you remember what I got you for Christmas? Nope. But they are going to remember the families that we fed at Thanksgiving because that's what's meaningful. And so that's the direction that I went in. And now we've been doing it for nine years. We've grown. And this last year, we fed 3,000 families, over 14, 40. Well, but, but also don't forget, don't forget that you've taken it a step further because you've inspired other people. I mean, so Matt Chase is in Cleveland. Lance Taylor is in Dallas. I think there's somebody in Las yep. Vegas doing and Phoenix, it. And Phoenix. San Diego. So now we're talking about, so, right. So you fed 3,000 families last Locally. year. Locally. Yeah, I know Matt, you know, very well. And I think he was around the same 2, number, 2,500 right? families. So a total, this last Thanksgiving, we've had 9,100 families across the United States. I mean, that's That's incredible. a lot of food. <laughs> and one of the things that, you know, you and I have talked about this a lot. And I remember you telling a story where, you know, I think we both shed a tear when you're when you're telling it to me. But your daughter at the Thanksgiving table looked at you and said something about, you know, think about how many families are having the same experience today because of you and because of every, everyone that's been a More part of it. More importantly, and I'll just really quickly, if I can, that story at my house, if you come to my house for Thanksgiving, everybody has to take an opportunity and say what they're thankful for to me or, and I get to say what I'm thankful for to them. It's about gratitude. And it was her turn to get up and we were just, you know, we just kind of had the blessing on our food and she got up and she said, dad, I want you to think right now before we enjoy this food, how many families are eating today because of what we did, what she did, she did it in her mind. Do you get what I mean? That's important to me that she, she right. did that and she felt that huge gratitude and responsibility because I, I don't know if you have teenagers. I have a lot. They don't hear anything that I say, but they see everything that I do. And this was a lesson that I thought that's what it's about. My daughter understanding and appreciating the service opportunity and wanting to do it. And hopefully that's my legacy. Hopefully if she doesn't do Thanksgiving cereal, she'll do something else amazing that she can go out and be proud of and, and create. Well, and you've created something, you know, and where it all intertwines, you know, you've got a successful real estate business because, I mean, one, people love you. I mean, you're, you're a great guy, but 
but this that you've created, you're giving people an opportunity to do something. You know, if they can give back and they can bring their family in and they can help put the food together or they can go deliver it. I mean, now you're creating, a, you know, people that are going to want to do business with you forever, but they're also feeling that same sense of gratitude that, wow, I'm able to give back in a way that I didn't necessarily know I could before. You know, and I've had people approach me about that. Like you're doing this for for real estate, right? You're doing this before like to build your sphere of influence or to create a bigger footprint in the community. And I think that if I had, um, if that was my reason for doing this, I would have probably quit my first year because it's a lot of work, dude. Like it is hard. And right. your, your ROI initially, you know, seems... Like there's no money, there's no money in it. And so it's, it's not about that. Have I received blessings? Well, yeah, I'm a better, I'm a better real estate agent. I'm a better dad. I'm a better brother. I'm a, like, it just, the, it's just a weird, your head has to be in the right place. You have to be doing it for the right reason or it's just not worth it. And the reason for me, truthfully, is because I'm, I'm kind of selfish. Like I, I believe in karma and if I can fill up my account with good karma, if I lose my wallet on vacation, it'll show up. You know, I know it will. I know, <laughs> I know that there's good things coming for me and the universe is conspiring for my best interest because my karmic account is full. I'm trying to serve others for the right reason rather than being like, you know, I, I wonder how many deals I could get off of this. Right. Well, and I think that that's very evident. I mean, you don't do it because you think that I'm going to build a massive real estate empire because I'm giving back to people at, on yeah, Thanksgiving, yeah. but it just... It happens. You know what I mean? It's like people do business with people that they like. And I think this opportunity that you provide other people goes a long way in, in just creating people that are raving fans of you. And that's, I have to tell you, that is the secret sauce. I have people ask me all the time about starting a charity. Hey, I've been thinking about starting a charity. I've been thinking about this happened and that happened. And my advice would be in any industry, anywhere, ever, get involved with another charity, get involved with the boys and girls club or something that aligns with whatever your mission is. Like if you had a, an alcoholic parent, well then that might be your thing. Or if you suffered a relationship that committed suicide, well, that might be your thing. Pick something and support it first. Starting a charity, man, hardest thing I've ever done. I'm not kidding. It was a lot of work. And so yeah. I think that if you can kind of get your feet wet and see how it works and see if it's something that really turns you on, it's not worth your time. I'm just going to put it out there. Like starting a charity is a, it's a full-time commitment. And I, I thankfully kind of love it. Like I really, it's the best thing that I do. So, so that's your advice. That, so, cause I think where you hit it on the head is, you know, even how passionate and how close to home this charity is to you. Like you said, after the first year, you almost weren't going to do it again. So if you're not doing something that you're passionate about, it's, it's probably pretty easy for it to, to not ever get any yeah, legs. Exactly. And the thing is, is there's no, there is no harm or foul in supporting the boys and girls clubs and rolling up your sleeve and getting to know some of these people of these other, and that's probably the best part of my, my whole, whole Thanksgiving heroes is the people that have been put into my life, other founders of charities or, or the Michael Knott bombs or all of these people. It's because of Thanksgiving's heroes. Like it, this forces me out of my little comfort zone to meet amazing humans. And here's the truth. Despite what the media will tell you, most of us regular human Joes out there are good people that want to do good things. And it's my belief in it. I know I'm, I am always sound kind of Pollyanna when I, when I'm around you, I know I do, but I really have this, like it's renewed my faith in humanity. This is like crazy how many people show up and raise their hands. Like I've got a truck. I can, I can do that. I'll drive, I'll drive four hours to deliver that meal, one meal. Oh my gosh. Are you kidding me? That's amazing. It's just the world is full of good humans. Well, now doing it for nine years, how many times are you seeing people that once you delivered them a meal and now they're Oh my helping? gosh. That's my, those are my soldiers. Like I could tell you, I've got people that say, this is an annual tradition. And I have people that come year after year. The only time I see them is on the big day, which is what I call the Saturday before Thanksgiving. But the ones that really, really, hit the nail on the head are those that get out of their car and say, Rob, this is what happened. I was in this place. We were sick or we were broke or something happened. And this miracle, that word, the M word, the miracle showed up in our lives and we want to be a part of it for the rest of our lives. That's, that's awesome. I, it is, that is the reason right there. Like 
this tribe of Thanksgiving's heroes that are showing up every year, year after year, it's, it is powerful. And then on the other side, on the business side, I have people call me all the time asking to either help with an investment, help with a house, because they do trust me. They do like and know me. Or these people call me because they know I know a ton of people. Hey, do you know a good attorney who can? Or do you know a good who can? And it's just just being in the middle of all these cool humans has been awesome. Now, I mean, that's powerful stuff, man. And like I said, I mean, when we started this podcast, the whole goal is, you know, we're going to have guests on here. We're going to do some episodes ourselves and just share some of our secrets that we've learned through all these masterminds and from some of the top minds when it comes to real estate investing and then tying it together. Because if you have all the money in the world, but you have no direction, you have no legacy that you're trying to build towards, you're going to feel pretty empty still, I think. And so for us, it's like, what are, what's our legacy going to be? And I think for me personally, there's probably still some still defining, oh, yeah. you know, and that's why, that's why, you know, talking to you, I know we, we've talked a million times about Thanksgiving heroes and, you know, to me, you having such a strong legacy that you're building is it's super admirable. And I love the whole thing. I mean, it's awesome. Well, here's the thing that I have really appreciated about it is for example, my friend, Michael Mottbaum, you might know him. He decided that, Delivering meals really wasn't his jam. He wanted to do a bicycle thing. Can you tell us about the bicycle drive? Like what inspired you? Because that's the thing I think is amazing is like, I have people look at me and they think, man, if that guy could do it, I'm going to try doing something. Right. So you did something, right? Yeah. So growing up, I, I always rode my bike everywhere. I mean, if I'm, you know, it, it kind of sucks the way that society has changed. Cause now, you know, like I have a 13 year old and I'm thinking, there's no way I'd let her ride her bicycle. Clear across town. You know, just because there's just too many crazy people out there now, it seems like. But I was always on my bike. And, you know, I just thought, if you're a kid and you don't have a bike, I mean, that sucks. You know, I, you, know you should have a bike. And so um, here in Tampa, we have a, or a charity organization called On Bikes. But my idea kind of, and it's pretty much the same thing as what they're doing, but 2020 came around. And it's a huge event that's in person and they didn't do it. And so, you know, I think usually it's somewhere around seven or 800 bikes. It's a, it's a big deal and they didn't do it. So I was like, man, you know, there's still just as many kids that need a bike this Christmas. So I said, well, let me see how many of my friends we can get together. And the first year, I think we, we had somewhere around 140 bikes that we got for kids. Amazing. Yeah. And then the next year, I think we doubled that. So, and now on bikes is back you know, back on again. So it's like, but there's so many kids that need a bike. It's crazy. I mean, there's, it's just, so yes. I mean, is it the same level of passion that I have that you have for Thanksgiving's heroes? No. I mean, I, I still need some definition around it, but it's like, I just saw something that is a need and I wanted to take action on it. And I would say that your story and our conversations are pretty much what inspired me to to just say, okay, I'm not going to think about it and talk about, I'm just going to do it. And that's, I think, probably the message to give anyone, just do something. Yeah. There's so many people that are like, wow, I wish, I wish I could, I I wish, do it, do it. Well, I don't have time. I'm a busy guy. I should tell you, I'm a busy guy. I've got a lot happening in my life. This is the most important thing that I do and everything else builds upon that. And here's the secret is, do you know anyone with a lot of money who is unhappy? Oh yeah, lots. absolutely. There's lots of people who believe on the hedonic mill that once I make a million dollars, once I insert blank here, buy a number of properties or own that Tesla or whatever it is, I will then be happy. That is not the case. That is a lie. The truth is once I think of other people and serve them first, then I'll be happy. And everything else will add up. You'll be happy that you drive the car that you do because, oh my gosh, I get to drive a car. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm happy that I live in a house right. that has a bathroom that works. I, it's amazing. And so it doesn't matter. Just do it. Roll up your sleeves and get to work. Quit making excuses and quit being shy and go go down there. And what are the volunteer opportunities? And if you can't find one, look around. Like I'm, Your story is there's so many good lessons in there because you found a need and filled it. You didn't have it. You didn't have to ask anybody. You didn't have to go talk to anybody. You're just like, this is what I see a hole in this, in this organization. And I want to, I'm going to do something about it. That is awesome. So. Yeah. Well, and just seeing like the look on the kids' faces, you're handing them a bike and you know, it's, 
to me, it's like that. Those are those moments that, and and I'm sure you you hear it all the time with people that are you're giving the food to. But then you meet families, and they, you know, they open up and start sharing their story, and it's. Yeah, I mean, it's awesome. I mean, last year when we were giving them out, this guy came up and he walked up and, you know, it's typically for kids, right? But I was getting all kinds of bikes, bikes of all sizes. I just go to Walmart and I'd literally just buy all the bikes they have. I mean, it was insane. But they, like, I'm like, can I get these 45 bikes? And they're like, wait. <laughs> yeah. uh... And so this guy walks up and he, and he t- starts to tell me a story. And he's like, I know this is probably just for kids, but you know, it was on a rough road and I was homeless, but I decided I wanted to be in my kid's life. And so I got a job and I work as a cook at this other restaurant down the street. And so I walk there every day from my apartment. It's like two and a half, three miles. And so would it be all right if I take one of these bikes? Because it would make it a whole lot easier for me to be able to drive back and forth to school. And I'm thinking that's what it's about. Like that's, yes, it's for kids, but I mean, this is one of those scenarios where it's like, that's exactly why you do stuff like this. Cause you, you know, you never really know what you're going to, how you're going to affect somebody's life. And then you later get a story or like, you know, you, you find out what happened and it's, it's like so rewarding. I love that. I love that. Well, the other thing too, on that note is that I was reading an article this morning and it talked about how there was a restaurant back East where a gentleman paid for somebody else's meal. It was right around Christmas and he, you know, these people aren't suffering. They're out having dinner. You know what I mean? But he, he bought their meal and then they bought the meal and it went through the whole Christmas holiday that it kept rolling forward, people buying one another's meals. And so what I'm trying to say is you don't have to have a large organization that feeds 3000 people or buys hundreds of bikes. You could buy the person behind you's coffee. You could just do something good in the world. The, the, we're so, in the past two years, two or three years, and I'm not trying to wax political, but we've been so diversified, so separated and isolated. We've been so fearful of one another that we're afraid to say hello at the grocery store. We're afraid to to be vulnerable. We're afraid to connect with other people unless I've known you for years. It's hard to make new friends. And Definitely don't don't, yeah, don't cough more than three times in a row. You'll freak <laughs> everyone out on the plane. But, but doing kindness all the time, looking for opportunities to do kindness is better for you than it is for anyone else you serve. If you're depressed, if you're sad, if you're lonely, doing kindness for others will get you out of your own head. If you don't feel like you're being successful, you don't feel like you're attracting enough abundance into your life, go serve. Go serve. I can't say it enough times. And people... It's the magic bullet. Getting out and out of your own shit. Can I say that on your podcast? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Getting out of your own way and out of your own shit, you will heal and grow and you will have that abundance. You'll have that friendship. You'll have the things that you want. But here we sit in our houses on our computers, sniping at one another. And I just have to tell you, it's all about serving. That's my belief. And so I think I think that you don't have to have a big organization in order to do that. Yeah. So have you always had this, you know, because you were in a police officer for a number of years, right? Eight years or so. Okay. So, I mean, this idea of serving and always, you know, when did it start? You know, I think I got it from my dad. That guy was always, there was never a weekend where we were just like going fishing. Like we were going to help the Jensen's move. And then we were going to help that, that gal from church. Her yard needs help. Like we were always doing something before we could go do something. And so it's just always been a part of, of my whole life. but. He would say that all the time. He would say, if you're ever sad, if you're ever depressed, then go serve somebody. And that's kind of been, it's kind of been a mantra. It's interesting that I, I all of a sudden, I heard myself just well, say that a minute ago, you know? Well, and you think about what you said, abundance will happen and things, good things will happen. Well, you guys had a serving mindset to begin with. And then when you ran on hard times, there was somebody there to to basically yeah. pick you up. I mean, it's funny how it works yeah. out like that, right? Yeah, but some of the families that I've delivered food to, I... I check in with probably monthly. Like I'm still like, Hey man, how you doing? How's things going? Cause their struggle isn't just during the holidays. You know, they're struggling with unemployment or mental illness, or they have a sick child, all of these things, all these things that I thank God, I don't have to, I don't have to work on them. And so it's. Well, and you said in the beginning, so Thanksgiving cereals in, in uh, Utah where you're at one in seven kids is on, the lunch one, program, one in right? five or now it's free or reduced one yeah in it's five. gone okay. way up so but but like matt in cleveland what's his number well, uh, i bet it's one in three it's really high 
So I'm right. feeding it's like the whole northern crazy. end of my state. He's feeding a county. That's how dense his need is there. It's amazing. And then Texas, I mean, you know, I, it's it's probably one of those things that if you're middle or upper class, you never even really think about that there's that many kids that don't even know where their next meal right. is going to come from. I think a lot of people were just like I was, like, here, where I live? Are you are you serious right now? Because every time I say that statistic to someone that's locally here, they're just, like, incredulous. They don't believe that the, the need is that great. It's it's great. You know, the other thing, too, that I found is that the need is everywhere. I live in a pretty nice area, and I deliver two meals in my neighborhood. You don't know what's happening behind those doors. You don't know if dad got cancer or lost a job or there's a divorce happening. And so it really it really has taken away my judging. Like, ah, everyone here in my in my community is okay. You never know. Yeah. The other thing, and I don't know how it is where you are, but so my daughter was explaining to me the school lunch program there, which, you know, you've got the kids that pay for lunch. Then you've got the kids that get free or reduced lunch and, and they don't get the same lunch as the kids that pay for lunch. And so that's another thing to me, when you look at these local schools, you can actually go in and, you know, just throwing ideas out there for what, you know, way people can get involved and do things that make a difference, but you can pay a balance on a school, you know, a kid's school lunch. And now they can eat the same lunch as the other kids. So it's like, we don't want bullying to happen in schools, but yet we're going to give this kid a bologna sandwich and then this kid can get a hot pizza. You know, it's like, it, and, and that, that right there, I mean, the numbers are really scary. I mean, it's crazy to, to see what some of those, like the percentage of kids that just, they don't get the regular meal like the other kids It is get. crazy. It's crazy that it's happening right here in our own country. We think that we've got everything put together, and this last couple of years has been a real wake-up call for me. I'm The need went from one in seven to one in five here locally. And so something, something needs to be done, and, and there's been so many times where I've thought to myself, someone should do something about that. Well, that someone is you. That's, that's you. Simply put, and even if you only, well, I can't help that many people. Only help three. Only help. I only was going to help ten. That was my goal. I have to keep reminding myself that as I grow my this larger and larger. I have to remind myself my goal is ten families, and it doesn't matter if you're feeding three thousand families or nine thousand families. Feed that dude. Feed that kid. Dude, right. Look around and just go do it. It's it's unbelievable the need that's happening in the world right now. And if you're in a position that you have, you're a have instead of a have not. You have a responsibility, my friend to do that. And the legacy, the, the, the thing that we keep talking about, the legacy is my kids are growing up in a culture like this. I hope that my, my daughters will go forward and they'll do, I see them doing kind things in the community and I think it's working, you know, or I see them reaching out and, and right. loving someone that perhaps is a stranger that just needs that love. And I just, I'm so grateful. And that's the real, that's the legacy. I, it would be cool if Thanksgiving here has continued after I'm gone, but I don't think I care too much. I'll be gone. <laughs> uh, but it, those people can yeah. get hungry now <laughs> i think it will i'm taking steps now because up until now it's just been me and a couple of my friends kind of muscling it across the line and now we're getting like very organized with the board and grants and all the things that come along with actually being a legitimate real operation and it's funny that i say that this last year, we spent two hundred and forty thousand dollars in groceries, and now we're just barely becoming an organization that's I consider legitimate. And so, but the thing is, I mean, you you every dollar that comes in goes to buying food to feed family, and that's where you know it's like you hit it on the head earlier. If we watch the media or listen to the media, I mean, you're you're going to think everyone is terrible. You know, the world is falling apart. There's no good people out there. But then you also have some charities that really are not charities. I mean, they're you know, uh, basically just a way to not pay taxes, you know, and, and siphon money through. And that's sad. I mean, that's, but, you, but the way that you've structured it is every dollar that comes in, you're, you're buying or, food. or using it to buy. Yeah. To, to the cause to buy food. Yeah. Every dollar. And so right. it's been, it's been hard. I feel like there's a, if there's an objection that I need to overcome when I'm talking to people about my charity is the fact that I'm using the money properly. It's an interesting, it's an interesting yeah. principle because a lot of people, once they meet me and they realize, oh, he's actually in charge of the pur purse strings to a degree. Wh what are you guys actually doing? Like, how does that actually work? Because I, I feel like it's this 
dishonesty and yeah, I think it's everywhere. It's it's hard to know what is what in this world. So yeah, I guess that would be my other advice is if you're going to do something, do something on a local level. Find a local level of people that are doing things that you know. I can I can put my money here. I can put my resources, my time or whatever and support them. Some of these larger organizations, I don't know the answer. I don't know, but I sure know these, there's a ton of local small groups of people always looking for help, even if it's just a, chair, a church down the street, you know, so... So, so in, in kind of closing and wrapping this up, you'd say, find something you're passionate about and most importantly, just do it. it. I mean, that's no more excuses. Get to it. It's not like the gym. You're not going to get better. Just, (laughs) just roll up your sleeves and get to work and, and then sit back and be surprised at how your life is blessed. Because I always tell people the number one person who's blessed at Thanksgiving heroes isn't the families who deliver or receive the food. It's me. I am at the receiving end of all of it. And it is amazing. So, and that's, and then my second bit of advice is don't be afraid. It's a scary thing to go and try to align with a new group of people. And especially the way that things have been the past couple of years, just don't be afraid. They're going to love you. They're going to love having you in any capacity. If you're just putting sandwiches in bags, thank you for being here kind of a thing. Right. Right. That's my advice. Yeah, man. Well, I can tell you, you've definitely inspired me. I know we've talked many, many times over the years and, you know, it inspired me from thinking of doing something to just doing it and, and creating some action. So I appreciate your friendship and I, you know, love you, man. And I appreciate everything you're doing for thousands oh, of people. Man, I'm thankful for your example and the support you've given me in my business, helping me create wealth, helping me think along the lines of how can I do this better? How can I, how can I leverage this tool and make it more sense? It's amazing to be around someone who is so knowledgeable, but gives me advice in a way that I don't feel dumb. You've never made me feel dumb and that is so rare like i'm i'm almost uncoachable because i don't want to feel dumb. <laughs> don't want to feel dumb and you guys have always done a great <laughs> job at being like well that's a great question let's talk about it and i'm sure you've broken it down to very small words to make sure rob can understand so thank you very much for all you do only when you have your billy bob <laughs> teeth in you know that's that's when i know i gotta no, really no down. all right all right guys well i appreciate you all tuning in and until next time This was the Legacy Wealth Code Podcast with Rob Adams. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Legacy Wealth Code Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, click subscribe now and never miss an episode. Until next time, onward. Onward.